I want to welcome Justin Hayward, singer, songwriter, player for the legendary group, the Moody Blues. How's the tour been going? Very good so far. Very good. Very enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, the tour, the Moody Blues, the voyage continues, Highway 45, of course, celebrating the 45th anniversary of the classic album, Days of Future Past. Uh, way back when the band was working on that album, uh, of course, you're very young at the time. Uh, did you realize how good it was at the time and maybe how long-lasting it would be? Do you know, I thought, in truth, I thought we were making... This is my impression of it. I thought we were making a kind of arty album that would have a limited appeal to certain kind of reviewers from the Observer paper or something like that. Uh And we might get invited to kind of arty cocktail parties and meet intelligent ladies. But that's about it, really. And, um, And I think that was about it until we came to the U.S. in 1968 and collided or or coincided with um, FM radio, which bounced back really to the U.K., and then our stuff was just perfect for it, particularly Days of Future Past. I talked to a listener on the air the other day about how we're anticipating your show here and and hearing songs like Nights in White Satin and Tuesday Afternoon Sung Live. I, you, you know, Nights is one of those strange things that there's, there's hardly anything on that record. I mean, it's no double tracking, it's... Um, uh, you know, the, just a lot of echo. I, it's, it, well, I was in Australia re- uh, recently last um, and gr- uh, last November, December, and Gra- Graham and I were doing a, a live radio show with a, 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 an important... Um, it was like the BBC Radio 2 of Australia. And this guy, he said, he said, what was that night in white satin all about, man? <laughs> so I said, well, you know, I had a go. I was at the end of one love affair and at the beginning of another one. And he said, that was a spooky record, man. That scared me out of my wits when I was nine years old. I didn't understand that at all. He said, I found that creepy. <laughs> and I thought, that was quite a nice reaction. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, well, I didn't find it creepy, but I've always really liked it. I mean, it's one that's, that's worn well over the years. Yes, it, it, it certainly, it's a song that you can go anywhere in the world, i found. And, um, and people will love it. Uh, do you find that today's technology, what you can do live, makes it easier to reproduce that sound in concert? Oh, yes, definitely. And, I mean, m- most of the tracks we are completely live. But, I mean, there's, there's, um, there, there's a, a couple in the, in the, in the, in the, in the act that, um, you know, we've been able to use, uh, y- you know, a lot of technology uh, digitally that, and, and put it in the form that it was in the record that we wouldn't possibly have been able to reproduce on stage. But um, it gets close to miming, but only on, like, two songs out of 22, you know, really. Most of it is absolutely live. Well, the Moody's, you know, long time, the, from the 60s up through the millennium, uh, are we going to hear a good sampling of everything at the concert? I think there's something there for everybody. There's something there from most of the albums, that's for sure. And, um, uh, you know, the first half is the later stuff that we've, that we've done, and then the, the last bit of the concert really is bringing it on home with the, with the greatest hits, the stuff that we couldn't get off stage without playing. How, do, how has touring and your audience changed over the years? Because you've been on the road a long, long time. Yes, it's in all of those 45 years. Um, well, I would say really that our audience really changed with two songs, with Wildest Dreams and I Know You're Out There Somewhere. Our audience was diminishing before an album called The Other Side of Life, and then we had wildest dreams, and suddenly we were um, pulling in huge crowds again. And the people that came to us with those records um, are, are probably still the bulk of the, our audience now. A lot of people of our own age have come back to us, and there's a lot of young people that like the music when, that we made when we were young. But the bulk of the audience is that crowd that came with us in the in the late 80s which is very nice yeah i never dreamed i would see the moody blues live and you're going to be a mile from my house and so i got to ask you after all these years what keeps the band going is it the thrill of the performance you, you could sit at home and listen <laughs> <laughs> from there. We, we're loud enough um do you know I, th- I think it is and i think it's a love of those songs we're revisiting a lot of those songs and um it's just a pleasure to play them and keeping them alive. You know, we have an immense catalog <clears throat> of original music, and I think that's got a lot to do with it, that um, the, the only way we know to make that music live is, re- is really play it on the road. And now we're, we're the three guys, really, in the band who always liked touring, and um, so that's why there's just the three of us out here now.
it's going to be great to see you, and thank you again. I wish you all the best, and, and thank you for still performing. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Please come and say hello after the show. Okay, Justin, take care. Thanks.